So thank you very much, and thank you very much for the invitation. Happy to be here again, my fourth time participating in the World uh, Policy Conference, and congratulations to Thierry for the 10th anniversary of this great uh, event. And really happy to share the OECD's view on uh, these themes on artificial intelligence, uh, also digital technology, uh, and future of work. They are very high uh, on the OECD's agenda. And Mr. Hamid just uh, uh, set the scene in an excellent way. There's not much to be added, but I go a little bit uh, more uh, in details. Uh, but uh, just to give you concrete examples of uh, how rapidly uh, the artificial, artificial intelligence has penetrated into, not only into our homes, but also into the work uh, places. When we look at the number of artificial intelligence related inventions uh, which were patented, in the five top IP offices uh, in the last uh, five years, the number of them has nearly doubled in five years. And also when we have a look at the uh, funding of artificial intelligence startups, the number of them was in 2012, 160 deals, and 2016, there were 658 uh, deals. So in a very short time period, uh, really a rapid uh, change. And we all see and, and can uh, 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 notice uh, that uh, artificial intelligence, it can help uh, make better decisions, detect problems earlier, uh, and also uh, generally reduce costs in a number of areas fundamental to societal well-being. And let's take once again a concrete example of health. Deep learning algorithms combined with inputs from human pathologists have lowered the error rate for breast cancer detection to 0.5% compared to 3.5% for just pathologists or 7.5% for just machines. So a huge improvement uh, uh, in the breast cancer uh, detection. Uh, but then, of course, uh, artificial intelligence also creates challenges. And we organized last week a conference at the OECD on uh, artificial in intelligence uh, under the title Intelligent Machines, Smart Policies. And really, the theme of uh, the future of work uh, was very high on the agenda in those discussions. So people tend to be very worried about what really will happen uh, to, uh, at the work uh, places and what will be their uh, future of work. But uh, we at the OECD think that these uh, uh, um, kind of uh, fears uh, could be a little bit exaggerated. And I personally also think that we should be rather optimistic when we think about uh, uh, the future of artificial intelligence and future of uh, work. The human uh, mankind has been able to uh, survive uh, the earlier uh, technological and industrial revolution. So I'm sure, rather convinced that we are going to, uh, we are able to survive this in an excellent uh, manner. But to g give you some reasons uh, uh, why we believe that uh, kind of these uh, fears could be exaggerated. So first, uh, uh, when you see this uh, slide, you see that there is a difference between what can technically be automated and what will actually be automated. Uh, social attitudes, they matter in deciding where the use of robots is acceptable. And as you can uh, see here in space technology, or it's uh, more acceptable than when it comes to uh, health uh, care. And another reason why we think that maybe these fears are a bit exaggerated is uh, that what will be changed uh, are individual tasks, not entire jobs. Uh, so entire jobs won't be to that extent automated, automated but more the individual uh, tasks. So the change, uh, the, uh, the nature and content of most jobs uh, rather than resulting in their total automation. And we estimate, you can see, maybe you can see uh, uh, there that there's a quite big uh, differences between countries, uh, what we es estimate that will happen. But on average, we estimate that 14% of jobs have a high risk that most of their tasks will be automated. But another 32% of jobs are likely to see 
profound changes in TAS uh, composition. And the third reason uh, why we think that maybe uh, we fear a bit too much uh, is that technology it destroys jobs, but it also creates new jobs. We all can see around many new jobs of which we couldn't even uh, uh, dream of or think of. One example, bloggers who thought 20 years ago that they'll be, they will be that kind of a uh, profession, what we see uh, now. But really, it is uh, uh, so that uh, governments uh, have to be uh, ready uh, to face this uh, change, and we are uh, facing risk of increasing inequality in labor markets and beyond through the changes that digital transformation is bringing to the organization of work and the way labor markets function. So, of course, uh, I want to underline that governments have to be uh, awake in order to help people to navigate uh, uh, to digital transformation. And here you see the third reason. Uh, employment rates have risen in most advanced uh, countries uh, in recent uh, years. Uh, so the future of uh, work uh, uh, may not be so bad as uh, some people fear. But then I come to the point, uh, what should be then uh, done uh, by the, the governments? So first, we need to adapt our skill uh, policies. The skills composition of jobs is changing, and here uh, you see that in almost all advanced countries, we have seen a decline in the proportion of middle skill jobs uh, and an increase in the proportion of uh, both low skill and high skill uh, jobs. Uh, but really in order to uh, face this uh, phenomena, uh, skills uh, uh, composition is utmost important and the governments really uh, have to uh, uh, improve the education system when it comes to the basic or the elementary uh, education, people need a mix of strong cognitive and soft uh, skills to complement their ICT uh, skills. Uh, and also, we have to have a look at the um, lifelong learning possibilities for adults. That system has to be improved much, I would say, in all the countries. Uh, and uh, skills policies, the second policy area is uh, active labor market policies so that workers who lose out in this transition, we can provide them uh, necessary income support, uh, but also means to find a new high quality job as quickly as uh, possible. So skills, active labor market policies, and third, also social security uh, policies, which we already uh, heard uh, uh, here. Uh, there are many possibilities for that, but really because the work is, uh, uh, or the forms of work are changing, uh, really uh, also the social security systems uh, have to change. So thank you very much for this opportunity to uh, share the OECD's view on this theme.